Hello everyone, I really hope you're doing well. What a wonderful weekend. What an amazing week we've had. It's been incredible. The ups and downs, the energy shifts, the mood changes, the sticks and stones and all of this other stuff. I shared an article yesterday in, in a, a group that I'm part of after being triggered by a, an amazing soul sister of mine. We have go back eons and eons and eons going back so far and I don't know how. This amazing crystal from an energy vortex in Bancroft, Canada is with me today just to give me some <laughs> protection, energy, some inspiration, some wisdom. I had a lot of um, tears yesterday going back to New Zealand and I posted uh, a very sentimental Maori uh, song that talks about love and your love returning and it was written during the First World War I believe and uh, all of the soldiers that lost their lives all praying to come back home and funnily, yes, funny, yesterday my daughter was in school and they were in history and they were talking about the Second World War and the domestic war that occurred here in the 90s and um, the teacher was talking about how Moscow was involved and how it was never conquered so Amy stands up and says oh I've got pictures of the war museum in Moscow do you like to have a look and she explained a lot of things and knew more than the teacher and that inspired me to look at the life that I've lived with my wonderful children my stepchildren my my natural biological children and where we've been and where we've lived and all of these critics about kids shifting from pillar to post living in different countries not good for them this societal template you must live you must bring your children up and you must take them to school and shifting schools is not good for them well it is what it is we all make life choices and we all go through a learning and a learning of life from the university of life because the university of life is the best teaching tool that we have and it's at our fingertips we don't need to read books we don't need to listen to some boring professor or study in a regime that's dictated to you must study this number of lessons you must get this grade and you must pass with flying colors or you have to reset a year and all of this other bureaucratic bullshit we can learn everything from outside of our front door those that have ventured out into other countries and into other cultures have an amazing insight into the multicultural society that we are and after that yahoo with my daughter uh, well my two daughters last night because we were talking about the hacker we were talking about where Jesse was born in Australia and lived in New Zealand Amy was born in Wales and lived in Wales and now we're here together in Croatia all places of where colonists have been and war and tension and here the tensions are still here because of the ethnic minorities that are here, the Orthodox and the Catholics. And then that sprung me on to another <laughs> piece of news that I read this morning about the Pope and the head of the Orthodox Church shaking hands and kissing like brothers in Cuba. A staunch Russian uh, influenced country. They haven't met, the heads of these two churches haven't met since the 11th century now what type of what type of message is that sending out to anyone that's Christian or anyone that's religious we haven't sat down since the 11th century in a thousand years we haven't sat down and tried to resolve our differences why is that and that took me back into my life journey where I've been and what I've done and it took me back to Israel, to Jerusalem, where 
I've had the privilege of visiting, I've had the privilege of, li privilege of living and working there. And being in what is called in, I suppose, in Christian world, in Christian society, the center of religion, or Christian religion, westernized religion, where you have this mixture of different churches, you've got Catholic, Roman Catholic, uh, Hebrew Orthodox, you've got all of it there. It's all there. It's all in one square mile. And I'm sure if you've watched National Geographic, you'll see it. The origin of the church, where did it come from? And who built them and who paid for them? And I ventured on my, my journey. I remember going into the catacombs of, of one church, and the first Orthodox church, which was a Greek Orthodox church, not a Russian Orthodox church. And into the catacombs of a Catholic church and listening to the history and looking at this wonderful scenery in front of me and I said okay so this is the hub of Christianity you go around the city and you see this is the place where Jesus was crucified and I have more questions than answers and I look at history today I say how much of this is real how much of this is true and yesterday I was also in working on a friend's website, preparing some work for him. And I had a task of writing a 300 word article about a particular client of his that produces models, life-size models. Not sexy models, but, you know, dinosaurs and things like this. And I decided to pick a subject, because they're based in Wales, on George and the Dragon, because this place has a massive dragon that's about 30 feet tall and life-size uh, cavaliers on their horses so I thought Georgian dragon and I myself was decided I decided to read because I have my perception of the Georgian dragon story because I'm English and I was looking at things like Wikipedia these supposed good authorities on history and, and real facts but there are so many stories, different stories, about George and the Dragon, myths. So what is true? You look in the English history, what perceived to be the English history, where the story changed so many times to suit the monarch. The Order of the Garter created in 1348 by Richard III, I think, or Edward III, something like that. But the story goes way back, it goes back into Syria into a city called Selim and this myth about a dragon being fed sheep and the last maiden was the king's daughter and the king challenged or asked for a challenger to defeat the dragon and if he defeated the dragon he would gain the hand of his daughter so of course this is the story of George and the dragon but was the guy's name called George? Because there's some history books that say this was a Roman foot soldier or a legionnaire. Whatever. When did this happen? Fourth century. The place where in Egypt, in, in and the George and the Dragon story also goes back to, to Israel in some history books. So I begin to think about Israel, how important is Israel in all of this, particularly Jerusalem, and realize that I've been to these places. I've seen these pieces of history. When I went to Mount Sinai, where I've been to St. Catherine's Monastery, at the bottom of Mount Sinai, where this burning bush is supposed to be, I've got pictures of me standing in front of this beautifully preserved tree that seems to be growing upside down and beautifully green in the middle of the damn desert. And listening to the history that the guides are, tour guides, are sharing, and it just doesn't make sense. There's no logical sense in, in the story. It's this. Well, how do you know it's this? Because this has been here since the 4th century. But where was it before? Well, we don't know because this was built in the 4th century. So then you track up to Mount Sinai and you get to the top of Mount Sinai and there's a big church, there, a little church there. And I've got photographs in, in front of there too. And you want, you actually look and say, okay, this was built in the 4th century, because you're told it was built in the 4th century. And how the hell did they get these big blocks 
up the side of the mountain because these are like footpaths that would have been there and then you told the story about this is the place where Jesus was laid to rest and this is the rock and you say, well how could you be so sure it doesn't correlate and you begin to see how history has been changed to suit the purpose of a man so man's recreating history rewriting history if we can't get a simple fact right about something that happened in history we change it we erase it or we, re we re reword it and this is the same with news today you can switch on your TV and find a hundred different news channels saying the same story in a hundred different ways so what is true it can only be true in your eyes if you're present there and I've said this before never believe anything that's written in the news you can buy a newspaper that's politically aligned to the left wing or right wing or center wing or whatever wing conservatives liberals labors greens and it's all tailored to suit the audience so news is tailored to suit the audience that it serves then you look at this crazy guy called Trump Donald Trump who's a multi-billionaire who's up to his eyes in debt in a, a real estate mogul who gave him this title real estate mogul where's his success his debt portfolio is close to half a billion dollars that's on public record and you start to begin not to question yourself you question what's true outside of yourself so you can never have an accurate an accurate perception of what is real only you know what is real from what you live on a day-by-day -day basis I also wrote or read or whatever I wrote about the stock markets a couple of weeks ago about how you'll see them stock markets fall because of this particular news feed and lo and behold the stock markets fell and fell and then they rose again then they fell again then they rose again and yesterday what happened they surged five or six percent and why do you think that is we cause fear in a lot of people to pull out of the markets to sell 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 so this pushes the stock market down and then the big boys come in like the Donald Trump's of the world and they come and buy it all up because it's cheap and then wait till it gets to the high again then they'll sell it when it's high and force the market down again so do you see this simple vicious circle that's been created by a few people if I told you to sell gold tomorrow as, as an analyst because of what I've read in the news and I was your advisor you would sell it and that would have a ripple effect and that ripple effect will cause another hundred or two hundred or thousands of people to sell, 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 sell. This will push the price of gold down. And then in comes the very same house that I work for to go and buy cheap gold to push the price back up again, to do the whole circle again. That's the circle of life. That's how the powers that be are keeping you in fear lift the illusion lift the veil of illusion that's created just to serve them not to serve you to serve themselves they use clever methods these days to install fear but it's not fear it's comfort and this is a new type of fear media now these days is just all twisted and torn, torn twisted and, and suiting whoever wants to tell the story when you look at the smaller news feeds you can actually start to read some truth and you can read some truth in in the situations that are happening real and a picture is being a picture is being portrayed the mass media those that have got lots and lots and lots of money are being saturated are saturating the marketplace they're saturating big social media networks like facebook twitter you go and see these days the biggest news feeds in the world 
have their articles spread across the world. Me, my articles don't go anywhere. They go to a select few individuals because nobody can see them. Nobody can enjoy the words that I write or the words that I read except through my own hard work in, in publishing and creating. That's my work as a service, as a, as, a, as a light worker. Because I can see beyond the veils of illusion. When we look at the situation in the Middle East, I'm just so disheartened that nothing is being done and nobody can see what I can see. If we look at the state of affairs in Turkey, Turkey is literally surrounded by the Russians. Literally. At the sea, on its borders, on more than one border now, and it's also got an influx of people running in fear from Syria across its borders that it can't handle. And this in turn filters in through to other countries like Greece who also can't handle it because their, their economies are totally screwed up. So these people are trying to get to Europe. So they go through Greece and then they're trying to cross other European countries that also can't handle them. So you have a humanitarian crisis that's affecting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And nobody's doing anything about it. That's the travesty. But it's okay for these people to portray that we're doing so much things to talk bullshit about ending these disputes in Middle East, in Syria, or ending disputes in Africa. If you look at these small countries, there's a mass migration of people running away from fear, living in terror, and they're just moving because they need to get away. They're feeling that truth. They're being impacted by that day-to-day -day bombardment, whatever, control. There's no freedom. And we believe the media is free. Independent media is free. Of what? It's all about convincing you what it wants to tell you so that you react or respond accordingly. When I look at things like religion, and if you're, if you're religious, please don't be offended by these words because I can only speak my truth. When were the first churches created as a Western culture? Christianity. Christianity evolved when? And how was it organized? The Romans agreed to allow it to happen. What happened before in history? Religion has played or religious preachers have played an essential role in history, even in Egyptian times, even in Roman times, even in Greek times, going way back. Priests have influenced monarchs, leaders, to suit their purpose. And if you look at the, the assets of the church, the Catholic church, the Orthodox Church. They have prime real estate. They have the biggest buildings. And they have the biggest following of people. You're paying for that. You go to church every week, you, you put money in the box and you say, you saying your prayer. Who are you saying prayers to? The universe. You can do that at home. Sorry, I'm eating them in to keep my mouth moist. I'm so passionate about what I'm saying because man has always been in conflict with man since the time, since the beginning of time. And as we lift the veils of illusion and we start to see this, what are the causes? What are the triggers? You can't have this off because it's mine. Okay, can I buy it from you? Can I barter with you? Of course. What have you got to trade? And then you need to find something different. So you send the market trader out, you take your wares and tears, 
and you go and trade with somebody else and you come back. It's only those in power and it's probably self-imposed power that are trying to have more when there is enough for everyone without any need for lifting a finger or saying a bad word against your neighbor or your fellow a human being in another town in another faraway place and if I look at my life where I've been I've been along all of these trade routes I've been along all of these exploratory trails you know I, I've known Europe like the back of my hand I've been to Egypt a few times and off the beaten track so I know Egypt I can go back to a place in Egypt now and remember I haven't lived uh, in Croatia in I came to Croatia first in 1997 1998 97 and in 2013 I took friends to a place that I lived maybe for two months and I showed them all of the back streets because I remembered I go to places around the world and I know I've been there before I've got this deja vu this sense of being the sense of being of knowledge let's follow this way and I'm following my nose I'm following my instinct which is my intuition. I'm following my higher self. And I've been to Southeast Asia, I've been to Australia, New Zealand, and I've mixed with these cultures. And I see the dances like last night, the hacker. Why was the hacker? What is the value? What is the importance and value of the hacker? How was it used? It was used as a way to challenge an, uh, an opposing force. It's a cultural, uh, cultural dance, ritual, whatever you want to call it. It was a non-violent ritual. The fact that they ate each other was neither here nor there. But the best, the, the first and former, the foremost form of defense was attack. Attack by looking ugly and sounding ugly and raising your voice, shouting and screaming. Because if you break through that line, there's another ten thousand behind. And these are societies that have lived by these values for millennia. We as civilized men and being civilized cultures have thrown ourselves in the powers of the church to look for solace and for guidance, but we paid for it. Why is that? God didn't ask anyone to build churches, whoever God is. The universe didn't say you need to find a place of worship. You can worship in your own home. You don't need a place to go. So this is this what doesn't make sense to me. And I don't need to make sense of it. I can lift the veil of illusion from it. I'm not disputing that historical facts never happened. What I'm questioning is the validity of them and how they have been changed to suit the purpose of humanity today. I bet you couldn't go to the Vatican and ask to look in the cellars to see the scrolls. You could never get there. You would never be allowed to see. They're protected. They're sacred. This is the word. They're sacred. But these are what happened. When you can look at old uh, hieroglyphics in Egypt you can see the stories there and these have been there for thousands and thousands of years how many scrolls and scripts have been lost and destroyed or taken away from us we're being told what we need to know or what we should know so that we follow there are many many shepherds that are trying to guide lost souls on a different path to living a life that is theirs that they can call their own that they can appreciate for themselves that they can appreciate what their life is not what somebody else's life is living in full peace harmony and love with oneself that you can contribute something very positive and very loving to the rest of the humanity 
This message may be a bit off the wall, maybe a bit far out there. But if you look at what I've said, <laughs> look at what I've said, and you look backwards, it does make sense. We only know what has happened in the past because of what we read or what we are told. If it doesn't make sense, is there a reason to believe it? Or are we being forced to believe it? I don't know what on earth happened in this time yesterday. I know what happened in my home. Do you know what went on in your home? Or do you know more about what's going on outside your home? Lifting the veils of illusion are also lifting the veils of illusion about yourself, what you believe and what you choose to believe. If you choose to believe nothing, this is a great starting place. This frees you from all of that external nonsense. I look at the place where my beloved is living with her family and I remember what I said to them in October, when I met them in October. I said, I believe that this country will become isolated. I believe that the people will not be allowed to leave or they will be prevented from leaving or the borders could close. And things will become very, very uncomfortable. I suggest that you renew your permission to be in Europe before it expires at the end of January. And since January the 1st, the Russian ruble has devalued by 20%. What they could buy, what was $1 was 60 rubles today, it's nearly 80 rubles. The price of oil has gone through the floor. The macroeconomics of Russia have gone through the toilet. And people are paying more for what luxuries that they are, are able to import. You've got embargoes, you're not allowed to go to Turkey, you're not allowed to go to India, you're not allowed to do this. You can't afford to go anywhere, so effectively you're stuck. And all the time you've got this big conflict brewing in the Middle East, which they're leading. I see the resemblance of the 90s all, in, all over again. And whatever happens, happens. I said my piece. I gave my message, and if nobody chooses to listen, this is their choice, this is their wish, but I do know that they do realize that it's true, and because they ex can't accept that it's true, they will attack with whichever way, shape or form that they can attack, and I'm still here, I'm standing in my light, knowing what I've said is true. And seeing it materialize and not saying, ha ha, I told you so. I'm saying, I'm here if you need my help. You choose what you want to choose. I'm not the enemy. I haven't created this scenario. I've said what I've seen. And that's the reality of what I'm saying now. I can tell you what I'm seeing and what I've seen from my life. And based upon what my daughter's and I went through last night some soul purging at a deep level. This week has been a, a, a week of clearing what needs to be cleared, ready for the new books of life. And I did this book again, the book is still empty, but it will start on Monday. The Shadow of Mercury Retrograde finishes tomorrow, Valentine's Day. And what is Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day is every day. Live in love every day. Give to your loved ones every day. Whether it's a piece of fruit, a simple note, there's no reason for you to go out and spend and buy a box of chocolates or a bunch of roses or a fancy card because someone says it's Valentine's Day. Every day is Valentine's Day. Every day is a day full of love, peace and appreciation for everything that you have in your life. And if that's your children, your loved ones, your beloved, or anybody, or anything that's special, show that love to them every day. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope I don't rattle too many cages, but hey, I've said what I've said.
take it easy, take care. Until the next time, which will be very, very soon. Oh, and closing on Monday, some city time in, in, in Australia, 9 p.m. in Europe, 11 p.m. in Moscow, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know the other rest of the standard times because I'm not in America or Canada and Latin America. I don't know the times, but okay, Monday, 9 p.m. Central European Time. You can tune in to my radio show. It's co-hosted by Carrie Turcott at On Times Radio. If you want to listen to more of my ramblings, it's a pleasure to ramble. I feel happy to be sharing my truth and not somebody else's truth. These are my words and I accept full responsibility for them. Take care. Namaste.